Hi everyone, my name is Megan Lemp and I wanted to offer you a quick exercise that is an effective way to let go of a triggering situation. And this is a set of visuals that really makes it easy to understand and applicable. So anytime that we're left with a repetitive thought or an emotion after a situation happens, we're kind of hooked and that is a trigger. And sometimes even though uh, we know in our minds that we want to let it go, it's difficult to do that. We know that life is constantly offering us unpredictable stimuli and we interpret what comes at us and then we choose how to respond. So let's move through this exercise quickly and simply so that you can see what the tools are for how to uh, let go of it and give yourself what you need. Grab a piece of paper and something to write with, and we're going to jot down three things. The situation that triggered you, how you felt about it or feel about it, and why you feel this way. So I'm going to give you an example situation to bring it to life, but you use whatever your situation is. And don't judge yourself for this. This is an exercise about choices and letting go um, because we're all interpreting life all of the time. And that's where our opportunity or choice is here. So let's focus not on how we got here, but how we let it go. In this fictitious situation, somebody said something to me that I didn't like and I didn't think was fair and I didn't think it was accurate. And Number two, how I feel about it is that I feel disrespected. And number three in this situation, why I feel this way is the person said something to me I didn't like. And I feel disrespected because they're not viewing me as capable or they're taking their bad day out on me. Whatever is the reason that you feel the way you feel, just jot it down. And I'm gonna stick with this fictitious example so that we can move through this exercise and you can see how simple it can be. Interestingly, this exercise takes several things that we take for granted in how we care for our internal wellness and our emotional and mental wellness and turns them upside down. So number three in this situation, the why, is the part that we have a choice in. And this is our interpretation of the stimulus. So in this situation, someone said something to me that I didn't like. That's the fact. And that part's out of my control because we cannot control how other people behave. Number two is that I feel disrespected. But the reason that I feel disrespected is because of my interpretation. So I don't like the way the person spoke to me and I'm interpreting that as because they're taking their bad day out on me or because they're not treating me or viewing me as capable. And that leads to the emotional response. And in this situation, I feel disrespected. So the interpretation leads to our feeling on it. And our feeling on it actually shows us the way out. So let's look back. The interpretation determines the feeling. And the feeling, in this case, I feel disrespected, shows us what I need to cultivate in myself to be okay despite somebody else's behavior or despite the bad news or despite whatever the triggering stimulus was. So in this situation, I wanna feel respected or accepted. And now I know what I need to work on in myself. So interestingly, we take care of ourselves physically by you know, clothing ourselves and taking care of our health care and feeding ourselves well. But often when it comes to our internal wellness or our mental and emotional well-being, we take a really passive role in that. 
And we're always looking outside of ourselves for somebody else to give us what we need to feel whole. And yes, that is valid because we cultivate good feelings and respect and acceptance in other people, and they cultivate it in us. That's what relationships are when they're feeding us internally. But again, that is very unpredictable because we are all reacting to what comes at us and other people might come at us in a way that we don't like because they're reacting to something else. So we cannot solely rely on somebody else to give us what we need to feel content or to feel whole. We cultivate it in ourselves as well as cultivating it in others and relying on them. So we need to flip this upside down and instead of taking a passive role in it, we need to view our ability to care for ourselves more in that way, more as an ability. Now, interestingly, once we determine what it is that we want to cultivate in ourselves in order to feel okay, we then turn something else upside down, which is instead of focusing on ourselves, we actually cultivate this in ourselves by sharing it with somebody else. And this is in real time. This isn't like the old what goes around comes around where at some point it will come back around. In this situation, we are everything that we're looking for already. But in caring for ourselves and cultivating our internal wellness, we can nurture that in ourselves instead of looking for it outside of ourselves. And Deepak Chopra really sums this up quite simply by calling it the law of giving. So if in this situation I want respect and I want to feel respected, then I offer respect to people around me. Now, in this situation, it might not be easy for me to offer it to the person in the triggering situation, and that's okay. I practice cultivating this in myself by sharing it with anybody that feels natural. So it could be you know, my kids or my best friend, as long as it comes naturally. I cultivate it in somebody else, and at that moment, I'm also cultivating it in myself. And once we realize this and turn this upside down and we have the ability to cultivate what it is we need to feel okay, we can then take that and make it a daily practice. So right now it's the morning for me. And when I got up this morning, we are all in a challenging situation right now in the midst of this pandemic. And maybe you're waking up already feeling a bit triggered. So as a daily practice, for example, I can wake up right now in the morning and think about what it is I wanna cultivate so that I can move through my day with more ease. So for today, for me, I wanna to cultivate tolerance. We're all here in a tight space together. And if I want more tolerance and more spaciousness offered to me, and I want to feel that regardless of how the other people in my family are responding or acting, then I do that by offering it to whoever I can during the day when it feels natural. So I cultivate acceptance or tolerance by sharing that with other people. Thanks for joining me. If you have questions about this, you can email me or contact me via my website, which is acculamp.com.